I was actually going to pull up a Lovecraft quote, quote uh, to sort of preface this uh, chair acquisition with, but I forgot because don't do drugs, kids. This is Tesla versus Lovecraft. <laughs> it's developed by Ten Tons Limited. It's done on a custom engine. You can pick it up for around 15 of your local particular currency. What is it? Tesla versus Lovecraft is an intense top-down twin-stick arena shooter from the creators of Crimson Land and Neon Crom. Play as the enigmatic inventor Nikola Tesla, harnessing the static ele- energy power or uh, static energy to power up the <laughs> Tesla mech and give Lovecraftian nightmares a lesson in horror. Uh, devs did send us some keys for this. What is this? You've never skipped to this part. Maybe you're really, really drunk going through YouTube. You come to in the middle of your drunken stupor, and all of a sudden this is on. This is the chair QA edition. This is where we take a video game, we play it a little bit, we discuss it, we do a little QA that the uh, developers should have done before pushing it out to production, and then we give you a fun plot based on some lawn chairs like those. One chair means that it's garbage, two chairs means that it's meh, three chairs means that it's pretty good, four chairs means that it's amazing, and we take these lovely, lovely chair scores and we associate them to our categories. Odoom makes it working. Shining Sands controls fun so let's kick this off then tesla versus lovecraft did it blurk boom um humbuntu 1710 ryzen 1700 16 gigajoules of ram powered by a 980 displayed at uhd which this game runs at uh pretty much a clean bill of health ladies and gentlemen nothing really to complain about uh it did have some weird freaky v-sync issues at first just like at the top line something i'd never seen but it it was me playing around with um, geo pipeline compositing and stuff that dark arts you don't want to mess with. Uh, nothing really terrible to complain about. So you know I'll, I'll give it a solid three because I'm still seeing that tearing every now and then. There's not an option to enable disable VSync or anything like that. Nothing negative against it. So Jordan, how did it run on the Intel box? On uh, the i7-6700K with the GTX 980 running Fedora 26, yeah, no real issues. Aside from a minor nitpick in that um, the full screen doesn't actually trap your cursor. So if you got ex- separate mm-hmm. X screens going on, if you uh, swing your mouse a little too far to the left or right, depending on where your other X screens are positioned, you get kicked out of the game, which when you're trying There's to unfuck an yourself... for that. <laughs> is there? Well, I didn't see it, yeah. so fuck you. I didn't ding it a chair for it anyways. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, it it ran exceptionally well. I didn't have any uh, tearing issues, at least none that I was able to see while I was being surrounded by awful, awful monsters from beyond time. I'll give it four cheers. What about you, Pedro? Yeah, no, actually, the uh, lock mouse cursor to the window was uh, something I was very happy to see because it's the first thing I do whenever I go into a new game. It's option screen. Basically change out the controls so I can play it with my uh, left-handedness and uh, have a look at the uh, graphics menu. And I did run into the uh, the thing that Ven described in the notes, which is the resolution that you're currently at always shows up three times. and But it doesn't that, really make that, a difference. That's, 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 so, so that's actually a Tesla reference because he was obsessed with the number three. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's good on them then. Uh, but yeah, uh, outside of that, absolutely no issues. I didn't notice any tearing on my end with uh, on Ubuntu 1604 with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. So as far as I can tell, it gets the four chairs. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Nikola Tesla would be happy with the score that he gets now with his three obsession because he gets three chairs <laughs> mixed with working. How about the shiny and sounds? I actually, I like the little designs that... At, so at first, I didn't really like care about the looks or feel of the game, but as you start getting more and more of the enemies, I'm like, oh, I like these kind of designs for like the Lovecraftian monster horrors. They're kind of cute. Uh, the soundtrack was <laughs> a bit of all right. I mean, I, I, I found myself not really paying attention to it, what with having more Lovecraftian <laughs> horrors to deal with than I could shake a pistol at. So it kind of faded off into the background. But like for the style of game it is, it is entirely acceptable. Uh, you get your little, every, every, everything is different enough. There's no real issues with character blindness, um, except nope. when you get swarmed, but that's kind of the point. <laughs> so that that's actually pretty good for games like these. Cause like when you have swarms of stuff, it's really easy to lose yourself. Well, but, um, uh, I, I think there's a, issue. like an interesting solution to character blindness is draw a green circle around your character. A really shiny that, green that circle. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which, which, which is also your health bar. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing, man. Uh, I liked it. The graphics, they work, but that's about it. I mean, they're, they're nothing too 
get crazy about. They, they serve their purpose. Personally, after playing this for a little bit, I'd like to see a version of this game a la Shadow of Warrior, or like a first-person type swarm, just because this is a murderation simulator. Your baddies, mm -hmm. tons of swarms, uh, kind of generic. I, I didn't fall in love with them like you did, man. But the music, a bit of all right, because like, eh, right out of the box, I was listening to it, da -da -da, then Squirrel, I had to do some stuff. Just the title screen music started in like a few seconds into that. It's like, oh, all right, I, I'm going to keep the headphones on. I'm not going to put on the Slayer. And it really works. It genuinely helps out with the action, man. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can throw it a solid two plus to that. Plus an Astrid. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I'm totally I, I, I with give you on that one. Uh, the uh, background music and how well it fits with the action that's going on. And when there's a little lull and there's less enemies uh, that are currently spawned in and coming after your ass, there's a just like a little lull in the background music. And then you get, oh, shit, there's like 40 enemies in the map right now. And they're all around me. And the music kicks up. It's like, yes, yes. Uh, the rest of the sounds, eh, hear one enemy of a given type die you've heard of them all but the music was really well done the graphics yeah this, uh, they're kind of meh for a top-down shooter for what it is it works but it, they're nothing to write home about so as far as i'm concerned they get uh, the three chairs <laughs> yeah i gave them three as well so if we tally all that up you get two chairs with an asteroid for the shiny and the sounds uh mr control stickler pedro what did you think about the twin stick controls uh, you know what? Uh, it's a it's a twin stick shooter, which doesn't do something stupid between the camera angle and pushing uh, down on a given direction in your controller or your keyboard or whatever. Break a door. Yeah. Still haven't forgotten about that. Uh, it's uh, the way you control the game is actually remarkably similar to Assault Android Cactus, which we talked about a while back. Uh in both how well it works with the keyboard or controller or what have you, but the general feel of how your character moves around and the different types of weapons and everything, that's uh, it's actually not a bad thing to be compared to Assault Android Cactus because, if you may remember, that game got a very, very solid three chairs. So, uh, mmm, look good. I'll give it four chairs for controls, actually. <laughs> mm. Then, Hey, man. Got to check out the controls. Nothing really to complain about here. Even if you're trying to, it's your standard top-down joint. You run backwards and you shoot shit. I mean, this is a simple <laughs> formula. Yep. Tried and true. Uh, unfortunately, I did find that it is absolutely not suited for playing with the Steam controller, the Areola controller, at all, no matter what you do with it. Maybe you can. I mean, this begs for actual physical twin sticks. I remember Trugs, like two weeks ago, was talking about that being an issue Case in point, this game, um, barring that, it works fine, gerbil keyboard combo, and uh, didn't have a single issue to report. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've found that, like, for twin stick shooters for me, I work better with the keyboard and mouse. It does work with the uh, DualShock 4 controller, which is good stuff. Uh, I, I really, really detest when games have issues with that. Um, but yeah, uh, keyboard and mouse, everything works fine. Even on the controller, everything's sanely laid out. Uh, I have no issues with it whatsoever. It's all the twin stick controls. Mm -hmm. Give it four chairs. And that's four chairs for the controls. So let's put a bow on it. Then, did you have fun? Um, hey, man. Th this game won me over like right at the beginning when you first discover that you get a mech. And its name... War Pigeon. Uh, oh, okay. Just somebody knows their history. That's the thing. Uh, I do enjoy, speaking of the mech, chasing down the mech parts. That's an interesting mechanic. It kind of keeps you way wicked busy. I mean, it's kind of insane. Um, that's followed by a bunch of uh, RNG perks. It's kind of interesting. And you are absolutely forced to use them. And... Sometimes they work, and sometimes you get dealt a bad hand. It's kind of like a weird card game. Uh, it's something you can pop in, play for five minutes, pop out, and don't have to worry about rage quitting. And I never felt that with this. He's like, boom, boom, boom. All right, I'm done with that. Come back to it. I was like, okay, that's another thing. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, 
what, when it comes to just kind of playing it in little chunks, that is definitely something you might think about doing because each level is legitimate. If you're watching the video version at home, it's legitimate nonstop because fuck you. That's why action. I mean, it reminds me of like half life two level of it just doesn't stop until you get to the end. What I will say is 1499 is a little, little bit on the high side for a bullet. Okay. It is just a little bit, but what I should really say is 1499 is a little on the high side for a bullet hell without online multiplayer. <laughs> Yeah, the the yeah. local co-op thing was a, a bit of a misstep, in my opinion. I mean, again, go back to our flow chart. Are you including multiplayer in your game in 2018? Yeah, make it, make it uh, network multiplayer. But, I mean, as far as shmups go, this one isn't too bad. Uh, this, this is one of the few that, like, I can actually tolerate playing. And to Ven's point about being sort of an anti-rage quit architecture, he's right. Um, like... Yeah, I, f I found myself struggling on like one or two levels sometimes, but it never got frustrating. It's like, okay, no, I need I may maybe a different power up set will help me out, or maybe if I maybe if I try a different weapon, or maybe if I adopt a different strategy and actually learn the map a little bit so that I don't get stuck in a fuck box. Um, yeah, like, and the the, the five minute playtime on most of the levels keeps is right at that short and sweet point where you can you can invest as much or as little time as you want in the game and still feel like you're making progress. Uh, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, the I, I, I like the the I do like the uh, character building thing where you have to um, where you have to like collect power ups and un you unlock new perks and whatnot. Uh, my favorite combination has to be like pierce through bullets with like the multi shot mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. how I beat the first boss. Is I got four multi shot, one armor piercing, and one increased fire speed, and it was just freaking spray and pray. Like the entire screen was just filled with bullets. As I was just like, <laughs> like I, I even killed the boss from the other side of the map just because I was just fucking spraying and praying. It was great. Um, I mean, if you if you played uh, stuff like Assault Android Cactus, like Pedro said, or what what this really reminded me more of was like uh, Serious Sam uh, Bogus D4. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They um they, they they play very similarly, and it's it's kind of like that without the jokes and more old timey references and Tesla and Lovecraft stuff. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is a fun little game. 15 bucks is a little cheap. I'd say wait till this goes on sale or in a bundle, but it's definitely worth your time. Even if you don't like shmups like this, this is definitely going to be one of those ones that like might even change your mind about the genre hmm. or at least be one well, positive example. You can use. Yeah, I wouldn't say change your mind about the genre, but if you're kind of meh on the genre like myself, uh, this game does something right. Uh, I don't know if it's the short levels, I don't know if it's the music, but it does something really, really well. And the whole, you pick it up, you play it, uh, you can spend about as long as you have free on it, and you will not get bored because it's every single level nonstop. And then you go to the bed, you, you get up, you get, you get a drink, you get uh, something to eat, and then you come right back. Next level, boom, boom, boom. You want to spend five minutes on it? You can probably get two levels done. You want to spend an hour on it? You can. And the music, the music is really, really good. Uh, I brought this up when uh, we threw chairs at Valley. That first segment uh, where you're running on the electrified rails and what they did with the music, they did something very similar with uh, Tesla v. Lovecraft, and I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, you know? Tesla versus Lovecraft, Lovecraft, uh, cynical namesake cash grab aside, I was actually uh, surprised with how much fun I was having with this game. Uh, again, I'm not that big a fan of twin stick shooters, but this one got me to have some fun. So, yes, as far as I'm concerned, for a single player game, yeah, not having uh, online multiplayer is kind of a downer, but for a, the single player game that it is, as far as I'm concerned, Four chairs. Yeah, that's uh, three chairs from Ben and I, four chairs from Pedro. Gets three chairs on the fun tally all that up, and lo and behold, we get a big old three chairs for Tesla versus Lovecraft. Definitely go check this one out. This is, mm -hmm. I was I was pleasantly surprised with this one as well. Yeah, I, was, I, I had a similar thought process to Pedro's, like, yeah, Tesla versus Lovecraft. That's like, 
That's so stupid. It's like, oh, what's what's two people from like the nineteen tens that people really like? Oh, Tesla and Love Hey man, uh, at least it wasn't like a pigeon dating simulator, right? Which it could have also been well that, that would have just been a Tesla simulator. Yeah, or 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 just like being a three obsessed vegetarian who didn't like sex. Anyways, um I think I think that about wraps it for the chairquisition. 